guys. Welcome to Audrey's Reading Area. Alexa, what time is Audrey's Reading Area? Audrey reads in her area live at 5 o'clock p.m. Live at 5. We're going to try this again. Take three. This is take three. Anyway, don't forget to click like don't forget to share and subscribe smash that subscribe uh button um when you get to audrey's reading area on youtube now don't forget now <laughs> the book that i'll be reading to you today is dropping in on japan dropping in on japan pack your bags you're going on a trip open these pages and travel to a fascinating faraway place Fly above a country and touch down to explore its cities and natural beauty. Experience ancient cultures as you roam. You'll meet many wonderful people, including other kids, and you'll see how they live. Uncover the secrets of map reading and navigation as you pilot a hot air balloon across rainforests, deserts, and mountaintops. When your journey is complete, you'll return home with a better understanding of the world around you and happy memories of the new friends you met along the way. And this is why I do Multicultural Awareness Wednesdays. You can learn about other people, their culture. Yes, meet new friends. So, get ready for Japan. Get ready for Japan. Hop into your hot air balloon, let's take a trip. You are about to drop in on a small country that is slightly smaller than the state of California. Japan is a crowded country. About 125 million people live there. Japan is made up of four large islands, Honshu, Hokkaido, Kyushu, and Shikoku. It also includes more than 3,000 smaller islands, which include Okinawa. Japan has about 200 volcanoes and 60 of them are active. An archive volcano is one that still erupts. Earthquakes also occur fairly often in Japan. Mm. Stop one, Okinawa Island. Our first stop is the island of Okinawa, one of the southernmost parts of Japan. Let's start our visit in Naha, the capital of Okinawa. Naha is like most big cities. It has shopping centers, hotels, and restaurants. If we follow the main avenue, we will come to the sea. Here, beautiful temples overlook the water. A few miles away is Shuri, a city with a strongly fortified or protected castle on top of a hill. The gate in front of Shuri Castle is famous. It was built 500 years ago. In January, the Geisha Horse Festival is held in Okinawa. In this festival, young women wear colorful robes and ride wooden horses in a parade. Wow. Before we leave Okinawa, you may want to try some of the native food. A typical meal might include mimiga, sliced pig ears with vinegar. <laughs> I don't know if it's good, but. Or rafut, rafute, pork with sugar and soy sauce. I don't know, eating somebody's ears or something's ears. Stop two, Kyushu Island. Kyushu is one of the four large islands of Japan, and forgive me if I mispronounce these things, please. The southern end of Kyushu is mostly rolling plains. These plains were formed thousands of years ago from ash and lava. This ash and lava built up from erupting volcanoes. The central part of Kyushu has steep mountains covered with forests. Kyushu looks completely different in the north. There you can see low hills and wide plains. Naka Dake is the largest active volcano in the world. When the volcano is quiet, you can walk around an edge of its opening called a crater. If you look down into the crater, you are looking more than 500 feet into the earth. There are many rare birds of Kyushu. You can watch black cormorant, cormorants dive for fish in the river, or you might spot white herons perched quietly beside the many rice fields. This here, this picture of fishermen weighs a freshly caught tuna in Kagoshima, Kyushu. Can you see the picture? A freshly caught fish. 
He's weighing it. Let's take time out. Life in Kyushu Village. Most of Japan's people live in towns and cities, yet there are many small village communities called Burakus scattered through the country. There are Burakus on the plains and mountains of Kyushu. Most people who live in these villages on the plains are rice farmers. People who live in mountain Burakus often raise mushrooms or grow tea. Villagers eat simple meals. For dinner, they sometimes eat either raw or boiled fish with vegetables. Rice and tea are always served. Now let's travel to East Shikoku Island. Interesting, right? Flowers are sold by sidewalk vendors in Karatsu on Kyushu Island. Very good. Don't forget to pause the picture if you want to pause the video. Stop three, Shikoku. The island of Shikoku has a rocky coastline. Fishing villages line the narrow beaches. Here we can watch fishermen men pull in fish that they catch. On the southern coast, the shore curves inward. Tosa Bay, with its clear blue water, is inside this curve. If we travel north from Tosa Bay, we will see mountains and rice fields. The land then slopes down to the inland sea. The largest city on Shikoku Island is called Matsuyama. Matsuyama. It is on the northwest coast. Ferries carry passengers from Matsuyama to other cities along the coastline. Now we'll travel north to Japan's inland sea. And here's a picture of a fishing village on Shikoku Island looks out onto Tosa Bay. Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. The sun sets over the inland sea of Japan. That's what you see here. Stop four. Japan's Inland Sea. Japan's Inland Sea is up to 40 miles wide and is 270 miles long. Three of Japan's four largest islands border the Inland Sea. Honshu is at its north. Shikoku and Kyushu, Kyushu are to its south and west. The Inland Sea is also dotted with dozens of tiny islands. Very few people live on these islands. When the June rain starts, you can barely see the islands through the thick mist. Mm -mm. <clears throat> the inland sea is a major shipping route. Ships from many nations plow through the sea. They carry cargo to Japanese ports. The towns that border the inland sea have many important industries. Workers at seaports along the coastland, iron, chemicals, coast, uh, coal, and steel in, onto ships. The ships then carry these products to places around the world. Our next stop takes us northeast to Kyoto on the island of Honshu. The island of Honshu. Step, stop five, Kyoto. Isn't that just gorgeous? Beautiful. You will notice that Kyoto is a large city far from the sea. More than 1 million people live in Kyoto. It sits on a plain and is bordered by many green hills. Kyoto has more than 1,500 temples and shrines. Many stand along the old canal. This waterway runs through Kyoto. Cherry trees shade the canal. One of the most famous shrines here is the Silver Pavilion. It's a Zen Buddhist temple. The main courtyard has a beautiful sand garden, says the beautiful Kinkakuji temple in Kyoto, uh, and it appears to float on the water. Look at that. Now we will travel to east, to east to Mount Fuji. Stop six, Mount Fuji. Look at that gorgeous mountain. Mount Fuji is the highest volcano. It's not a mountain, it's a volcano in Japan. It is 12,389 feet above sea level. Mount Fuji is peaceful these days. 
The volcano last erupted in the year 1707. Hmm. From the top of Mount Fuji, you can watch the sunrise through the clouds that most always surround the volcano. You can also see Tokyo in the distance. Many tourists climb Mount Fuji each year. The name Fuji comes from an Asian word meaning fire. I guess you guys didn't know Fuji came from an Asian word that means fire. Let's take some time out, it says. Special foods of Japan. Japan has foods that are not found anywhere else. Fish sold in Japan is fresh, so it's safe to eat raw. Sashimi is raw fish. Sashimi. It is sliced so that it looks like delicious. It looks delicious and is placed neatly on a plate. Another dish is sushi. It is rice that has been seasoned with vinegar. Sometimes sushi has raw fish in the middle and is wrapped in seaweed. This is called a nori roll. There are dozens of, of different kinds of noodles made in Japan. One of the most popular is udon. These are flat white noodles made of wheat. They are chewy and you can dip them in soy sauce. You can also add bean curd tofu. Tofu is bean curd to noodles. Tofu is formed into a white cake. Sometimes tofu cakes are chopped into cubes and added to soup. Hmm. See that? From Mount Fiji, we'll move on to Tokyo. For this journey, we will travel north, east. North, south, east, and west. Yeah. Step, stop seven, Tokyo. Look at the buildings. Interesting. Tokyo, the capital of Japan, is a huge city. Its streets are always crowded. More than 8 million people live and work here. Another 20 million people live in the surrounding areas. Tokyo is really a group of cities and towns. They have grown close to one another to form one huge urban area. Much of Tokyo is a modern city with skyscrapers and department stores. Some parts of the city are very old. Oh, wow. So in these areas, you will find streets that are lined with wooden houses. Wow. In the middle of Tokyo is the Imperial Palace. This is where the emperor lives. It is surrounded by a large moat and park. The major shopping area is called the Ginza. Ginza. You can see lots of neon lights here. Visitors to the Buddha statue decorate the base with flowers. It's going to take some time out. Growing up in Japan. Kids in Japan go to school six. I said six days a week. School usually starts at 7.30 a.m. and usually ends at 4.30 p.m. Students learn to speak Japanese and to write the four sets of symbols of their language. They also learn English. That's a good thing. Japanese children must take hard tests every year. If a child misses a day of school, his or her mother must sit in the classroom and take notes. So if your child is absent from school, your parent has to sit in there and take notes of the class on the day that you're not there. Wow. After school, many kids go to another school called a juku. Juku. These extra classes help them do well on their tests. When people go home, they must take off their shoes before they enter the house. Inside the house, they wear slippers or socks. Most rooms are covered with tatami. These are thick mats made of rice straw. Sliding paper screens called shoji separate the rooms of the house. At night, thick mattresses called futons are placed on the tam tam tamati, tamati, uh, ta ta tatami, that's it, tatami. Now we will travel north to Hokkaido, our last stop. Mm. Stop eight, Hokkaido. Hokkaido is the northernmost Japanese island. 
Most of it is covered by forests and mountains. Hokkaido does not have many big cities. Most people do not like the cold, snowy winters of this region. Hokkaido has many wilderness areas. The island has national parks with all kinds of wildlife. Sea lions, snow monkeys, foxes, bear, and deer live in Hokkaido's parks. Mm -mm -mm. One of the most beautiful parks in uh, Shire Toko Park on uh, Shire Toko Pen Peninsula. The shore is rocky. Many tourists come to Hokkaido to see the Ainu. Ainu. The Ainu are the native people who once lived throughout old Japan. There are probably fewer than 200 Ainu left in Japan and their way of life is slowly vanishing. Wow. So we're going to take some time out again, it says. Japan's many colorful festivals. So let's show you this picture right here. Nice, right? The Japanese people hold wonderful festivals all year. The new year in Japan is not just one day. It lasts several days. This is a special time of starting new things. People clean their houses until they shine. Maybe I could borrow them for a second, right? I'm just saying. Old clothes and other things that are worn out are replaced. A spring celebration is called Setsuban. Setsuban celebrates the end of winter. On that day, beans are tossed. Japanese people say, out with demons, in with good fortune. Each person is supposed to eat one bean for each year of his or her life. This brings good luck. I'd, I'd be full of beans, yeah. <laughs> Children take part in the flower festivals of May. Small Buddha statues are covered with beautiful flowers. Children pour tea over the statues. Then they take the statues home as gifts. Now it's time to set sail for home. When you return, you can think back on the wonderful adventure you had in Japan. And they also have a glossary and a further reading here. So I'm gonna give you some of these words like Buddha. It's the founder of Buddha, Buddhism, an Eastern religion. Baraku. Barbaric, no, Buraku, a small Japanese village community. Cargo, goods carried by ship, plane, or vehicle. That's what cargo is. A courtyard. An open area surrounded by walls or buildings. Crater, an opening at the mouth of a volcano. Island, a body of land entirely surrounded by water. A moat. A deep hole, usually filled with water surrounding a structure. Shrine, a holy place often set aside for the worship of sacred being. A temple, a building for the worship of a god or gods. Okay. The end, you guys. The end of Dropping In on Japan. Wow. Wow. Thank you guys so much for being here and listening to me read fun, exciting, and multicultural books like Dropping In on Japan. This book is written by Lewis K. Parker. Lewis K. Parker, don't forget that. It's a geography series. So once again, shout out to my mom. Her name is Bev. She was here um, at the beginning when we had these when I had the technical difficulties. Um, not sure if she's here now because I can't see. If you don't leave a comment, I can't see you. So shout out to anybody who's here watching. Shout out to you. Shout out to all of you guys who go to YouTube and smash that subscribe button for me. Smash it. Smash it real good. And tell all your friends, tell everybody to go to YouTube to Audrey's Reading Area and smash that thing for me. Now, I want to send a shout out to everyone who was on the other, the prior videos because... The technical difficulties, it just stopped recording. I don't know what happened, but it just stopped. To shout out to all of you who were here. I know Patsy Williams and her crew, her gang, her team, her kids, her babies. I know that she was here. Shout out to Destiny, Darla, Delilah, Deanna, and DJ. Shout out to 
my girls, um, Ed Elliot, who's my cousin, Victoria and Sheena G who share my video all the time, every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to send a shout out to, um, there's a famous writer. His name is Jerry Wells. You should actually, um, yeah, check him out. Check him out. Shout out to you, Jerry Wells. He has, um, shared my video too. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And shout out to everyone. And I thank you for your, all your love and your support. Thank you. Um, I'll be live again tomorrow at five. That's live. L I V E live at five tomorrow. I will see you there and I will see you soon. See you.